Hi everyone. Last year I grew Peruvian daffodils and I immediately fell in love with their amazing fragrance, the really cool exotic blooms, the beautiful strappy leaves, and just the easy care nature of these early summer blooming bulbs. And so I thought I would just make a quick video on how to plant Peruvian daffodil bulbs. I filmed the footage back in March when I planted the bulbs because, you know, the first time I ever planted a Peruvian daffodil bulb, it felt really strange. I felt like I was doing it incorrectly because it's a little bit different when it comes to the planting depth and overall care. So Peruvian daffodil bulbs are winter hardy in zones eight through 10. I have heard some gardeners in zone seven say that they have successfully overwintered the bulbs by placing some shredded leaves or shredded straw on top of the bulbs. But here at my 6B garden, I've never been able to successfully overwinter them. Every time I've tried leaving the bulbs in the ground, I've lost every single one. And so we'll go over how to store them at the end of the video as well. But we want to plant the Peruvian daffodil bulbs in the spring. Choose a full to part sun location that provides some shelter from the wind. The soil should be well draining because these bulbs need moisture in the spring, but the soil should be quite dry during the summer and fall. Now, here's the most important part on the part that I felt like I was doing wrong that initial year. We want to plant the bulbs with the base of the bulbs neck, even with the soil surface. This can feel really strange since most bulbs are planted two to three times as deep as the bulb is tall. But when it comes to Peruvian daffodils, this shallow planting is correct. Now, once the bulbs have sprouted and are actively growing, water is needed to keep the soil evenly moist. Now here am I constantly rainy. It's constantly, it's literally raining right now as I'm shooting this. I have an umbrella on top of you guys. I basically never have to water these bulbs again, but that's going to vary greatly from one region to another. But the goal is to just keep the soil evenly moist in the spring as they're growing. You'll first see this beautiful foliage up here. And doesn't it look just like an amaryllis? It is a member of the amaryllis family. Then as we hit about June, you'll start to see these wonderful flower stalks emerge. Each flower stalk has, I would say, about five flowers. The flowers are short-lived, unfortunately. Each one seems to only last about two days, but just like an amaryllis, they all take their turn blooming on a stem and you get multiple bloom stalks per bulb. Some bulbs have given me three, some five. So somewhere in between there is what you can expect. And it's mid-June now, which is when they really hit their stride. So we have the smooth hydrangeas blooming, the bread seed poppies blooming, fever few, Asiatic lilies. It's just a wonderful time out here in the garden. Now, once the bulbs are done putting up flowering spikes, what I like to do is just go ahead and remove these bloom stalks. And then I'm going to leave the foliage in the garden for the rest of summer. I'm going to leave it in the garden for the fall as well. And once I see that the first frost is approaching, I want to bring the bulb with the roots attached inside my home. I feel like the best way to do this is to just dig up the plant bulb and all with the roots still attached to the bulb and place it into a pot with fresh potting soil. Just dry potting soil and then put it in your basement or a dark closet somewhere cool about 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit just like an amaryllis. Dark, cool, dry soil. The leaves will die back naturally just like an amaryllis and just leave it there all winter. Then in the spring, you can replant the bulb with the roots attached. And that's the best success that I've had in terms of storing these beautiful, beautiful bulbs. But you can also just treat them as annuals. Generally, this is not an expensive bulb. Or you can also do like this one. There's some over there planted in the garden. This one is planted into a pot. So it's pretty much ready to go inside as soon as that first frost approaches but it's such a wonderful flower, a really beautiful fragrance. The fragrance is more intense in the evening. And I also think that it's just something cool to have in the garden, you know? It's something that people will stop and say, 
what is that? Or just come in for a closer look and a smell. I mean, I just love having things like that in the garden to create that sense of wonder. It makes you feel like a child again. So friends, I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in your gardens and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.